second time to try to stay connected. If it doesn't work, I may give up on quilt cam altogether. Is anybody here? Let me know. The last one cut off after about 15 seconds in. So hopefully I'm waiting for somebody to show that they are here. Anyone, anyone, Bueller, anyone? I see that three people can see us. So good, so um, let me flip, just, I'm just gonna flip back to um, the other one that failed and delete it. So hang on just a second because I don't want anybody to think that that's the one. So um, my goodness, I've had a heck of a time trying to get Quiltville Live <laughs> going because they moved the, the go live button. There's now this thing at the top of a page and if you own a business page, you'll see it. It says creative, um, let's see, where are we gonna go? That one, let's see, we're going to do this one. It says live now, so okay, so we're just gonna we're just gonna leave that. Um, so they've moved the whole. There used to just be a go live button with all these little different options that you could choose on the front of your Facebook page if you're a page owner. Today, when I decide to do this, it's not there. It's it's not there. It's nowhere. It's not on my. I see it on my personal page, but I don't see it on the Quiltville. Um, open studio group or on my own personal business page, which is where you are watching right now. Um, so there's this thing called Creator Studio at the top. And when you click that, you've got to go through all of these um, jumps and hoops and all kinds of stuff. And they want to give you the security key and this other thing. So if Facebook gets too hard, to deal with. I don't know what we're going to do. This was supposed to be simple, but I see all kinds of thumbs up and hearts going. So that means we're connected. So welcome everybody. This is, if, you, if it sounds like there's an echo in here, it's because the walls are very empty. There's not a whole lot um, of stuff in here other than my merchandise to ship for the, the Quiltville store. So um, hi Sadie. Sadie hears mama talking. So she wants to know What's up? What I love about this place is the space. This little post office was built around 1950, late 40s, early 50s. And um, the, the main room is 20 feet by 23 feet. So I've got lots of space. Of course, once I move my long arm over here, it's not going to um, have as much floor space, but I'm excited. It's just so nice in the morning to get up and fix myself breakfast and maybe post my quilt filled quote of the day and then grab my lunch and my stuff and head out to the office. I've been much more productive because I'm getting myself out of the house. Poor Sadie, she doesn't know what she's doing. And I've even prepared a, a project <laughs> to work on the very first lay down at the at the Quiltville post office. Do you want to see what it is? I'm going to grab the camera and kind of give you um, a video tour of the room. Pardon any shakiness, but I'm just going to grab my little external camera here and watch the touch screen on the thing. So so there's the, the front window and there's Sadie. Hey, Sadie, you say hi to everybody? Yeah, I'm white in the face and I'm an old 13 year old girl but I've actually laid a quilt out on the floor. I started setting the sashings in place and the cornerstones in place and then realized that I was going to run out of time. So I've picked up the first couple of rows, um, webbing style, and then the, the next row, the row with just sashings and blocks will stay there on the floor till I need to pick them up. I've got windows and window shades over my shoulder. You can see that the hubby has worked tirelessly to get this place um, ready for me to move in. And it looks like a totally, totally different place. You wouldn't even recognize it. We've replaced windows, we've put in window sills, we've replaced the ceiling. These lights are LED and they are amazing, just amazing. You can see in the, the big busy front window there, um, we've got window film in the window to block the sun that comes in in the morning. It really streams in here and heats the place up. So it's reflective, nobody can see in. Yesterday, I, I sat here filling orders and an SUV pulled up into the driveway and uh, they, 
<laughs> they roll down their window and these cameras are being hung out of their windows, you know, cell phone camera, flashlight going, flash going off, and they're taking pictures of the front of the house, not knowing that I'm in here watching. I, I wondered if I should have gone out and, and opened the door and waved them in, but but I but I didn't. I didn't want to mortify them. Who knows if they were even quilters? They could have just been old house lovers. So I'm going to pan this direction. The front door has um, privacy film on um, because I can't put a blind there to block the morning sun. So that really helps. I've got the world's largest whiteboard with a whole bunch of bullet points already marked on there because life is busy and I've got some deadlines in progress. This will get not so messy over time, maybe. But this is the, the Quiltville store back there. So all of the books and merchandise that I ship out from here, it's all handled in one station from the stock shelves to the computer where I process orders and print invoices and print uh, mailing labels right off of the label printer. The other tables is where I fill stuff and then out the back door I go. So where I'm working today, let's see, I guess I can pan a little bit further. You'll see a mess. I'm kind of in a good spot. So that first door back there goes to the back room and I'm going to have kind of a little kitchenette set up in there. Um, no sink, just fridge and microwave and storage and things like that. And then um, leftover case box storage type stuff. The open door here that you see with, with the hole in it, we were replacing the doorknob because the doorknob was really ugly and it's got to be painted. So that's the uh, postmaster's office is in there. And I've got my big computer with a huge monitor so I can do some design work on there. Um, I need a big monitor when I'm coloring in little squares. Um, this, there's a quilt on the wall. Can you see we've got color on the wall? And then the most important room of all times, the Quiltville Lou, right in, right in here. So uh, this looked like a gas station bathroom when we first saw the place. It had an old yucky sink on the wall, 1950s sink. And the, the toilet was one of those low to the ground and round seated and, and rickety. So this is all all been fixed up and I can't wait to decorate it cute. I'm gonna turn this around and put it back. There we go. So, you chop off the top of my head. So there we go, okay. So this is my space. It's called with Bonnie's daycare in here. And I love it because through the windows behind me, I've got a, a front row seat view of the porch at the retreat house. And it'll be easy for quilters to come back and forth should there be something that they need. I'm going to carry basic quilting supplies here from needles to thread to rotary cutters, some rulers. Um, I don't think that I'm going to carry fabric unless I can find a way to maybe string a lot of my stash down and set, sell it by the pound for string quilts or something. I don't know. But I just know that this is, this is my happy place in this little town that's really not a town. Um, this little machine, this is a Singer 99. And one of the things that I wanted to do, but I didn't get a chance to do today, was look up the serial number. Um, it's, it's a two letter prefix. So if anybody wants to look that up for me, you can send it to me an email and let everybody know. It's AA439396. I'm guessing it's somewhere in the 20s and, or 30s. It's got a chrome hand wheel and the old style bobbin winder. And it works by knee, by knee control, which is really fun. And it's in that, that favorite little library table. I showed pictures of this on the blog just, was it yesterday or the day before? I can't remember. But what I'm working on here, and I have to do it this way. I've already got my blocks and my sashings and my cornerstones for column one and column two of the quilt on the floor, um, right sides together. And the first thing I'm going to do is column two is over column one. Remember the turn the page thing? So what I'm going to do for today as well as um, answer your emails if you have any. The, the laptop is quite a bit away from me, so I can't really see anything. I'm looking for the foot pedal, and there isn't one. It's a knee lift. <laughs> so <laughs> if you email me, send me your pictures or your questions. The address is quiltcamtime, one word, quiltcamtime at gmail.com. And I've got the phone right by me. Operators are standing by, and we'll see if we can get some conversation going. I'm not sure how long... We will work this today. It's a um, 
This is our trial run. I know that the, the retreat house, the, the connection isn't strong enough yet to be able to do quilt cam from the house, but I was hoping that it would work here from the post office. So let's give this a shot. I've already got my quarter inch seam guide down and we're gonna do the first one. I don't even have any leaders and enders here, so we're gonna cheat today. Okay, so I like to trim my threads off right away. I don't wait until I'm done sewing. I just get these starter threads right off and I do have a trash can. So as I pick these up, because column two is on top of column one, you know, there's rows across, but columns go up and down. We're working columns. Column two is bigger than column one. It doesn't matter. I know you want to turn it over and sew it the other way, but then the bottom side of row one is at the top and that it makes a mess. So the bigger one is on top, just keep them aligned. And I'm just picking these up the way that I pick them up. So this is column one underneath. This is the sashing. The block is column number two and it's on top. So there's your sneak peek. How many of you recognize our basket blocks? This is um, Fancy Basket, one of my Addicted to Scraps columns from a couple years ago. And the sashing, I can lay this right here so I don't mess it up, okay. The sashing I pieced from strip sets and I made sure that I pressed it in a way that will automatically nest with the sashings in the block. So sometimes it's worth taking the time to know which way you're going to press. Sometimes I have a complete pressing fail and then I know the next time what not to do. So I've got seams pressed away there. It feels a little bit weird having the bigger block on top, but column two goes over column one, just like you're turning the pages of a book. Don't do it the other way, because it's gonna cause you some problems. All righty. So. This is my first time really working with this machine. I need a little bit bigger stitch. The last thing I was doing was string piecing. So on this machine, it's not a lever and there's no numbers. It's all guesswork. I just have to turn the, the knob to the right to make the stitch bigger. And then I need to nest that sashing. I've been longing for a place to have this machine to play. And it looks like I can reverse press that there also. This is the first time putting sashing into this quilt and there's a little triangle at the base of the, the basket that I can also nest with that sashing seam. So I just reverse pressed it. Okay, so from there, stitch length can still be a little bigger, I think. My rule is if I'm going to sew it, I have to be able to get the seam ripper underneath it if, the, if, if I'm going to sew it. So uh, once again, this is column two over column one. So even though the sashing is the bigger piece, the sashing is column two, the cornerstone is column one. So the cornerstone is just going to kind of hide underneath here. And ultimately, I would put another table, I think, behind here to catch the weight of what I'm doing. I'll pick up another one here. So I'm going to nest that sashing seam. So it goes that way. And then this one. So if that's going that way, this seam needs to come this way. I may need to strategically repress some of these sashes. Okay. So my whole goal this week was to get this top together. It's likely not gonna be done all the way. I have mystery stuff in the works. That's gonna take some time. And we'll oh, shoot. Okay, so if those go that way, then this needs to go that way. Okay, I think this must have been the sashing that I did before I figured out which way they need it to press. All right. Yeah, that's the one. When it's string sashings, I don't worry about matching seams, but these are not strings, they're strips. And 
And there we go. So we're building our two columns together. And when I've gone all the way to the bottom, I will flip column number two out. And then I'm going to turn column one and column two around and do a line of stay stitching on that outside edge. And that um, was something I was told that will help things from flippy floppy and hold things a little bit more stable. But in the meantime, I want to head over to my inbox and see we've got going on here. And I did not even get this set up. I was so frustrated over this whole creator studio thing. So we've got singer machine date right at the top. Thank you, Susan. She says, according to the singer dating site, AA numbers were from 1924 to 1926. And she is, she's absolutely beautiful. I love her. And this one is the machine that was brought down from Minnesota, Pony Express from Sherry and Joyce um, in Minnesota. I love her. She says, great space you made. That was a lot of work. I've worked on old houses before and that is an awesome transformation. Thanks for all you do and for all your wonderful guidance and friendship. And this is Susan in Indiana. Um, those of you who followed for a while will remember that we had 24 inches of snow from a dumping in December, all in one storm on the roof. And it stayed cold enough that that snow didn't melt right away, even though the roof has a slight slant to it. It's supposed to run off. Well, the weight of the snow, if you can imagine the weight of that snow, old seal on the, on the roof, um, the crack in the seal, the water dripped through, it ruined the drywall, the drywall ceiling had to come down. I was supposed to be in here last November for um, my String Frenzy book release. You are 57 years old. I am 57 years old. Why is this telling me that? <laughs> so anyway, so uh, I feel like, you know, sometimes the universe knows more than we do what needs to happen in our lives. Because we had to fix the roof and the old drywall ceiling had to come down, we were able to easily wire for the overhead lights. Um, and we had much better weather to get the painting done. And once, once the drywall was done, the painting happened quickly. And I was not right off the bat dealing with 500 orders a, a week of book orders during, during, during a new book release in the wintertime. So it's all good. So we're here. So thank you so much. 1924, 1926, which means she's creeping up on 100 years old. I love that. Um, and here's another one that, from Catherine that she confirms. She says, your machine is one of 15,000 born May 19th, 1925. So, so happy to have her here. And I really do like the, the knee lift, if I could get used to not searching for my foot pedal on the floor. Um, Caitlin says, quilt designed by Hubby. Hello from Montana. I just finished up a quilt my husband designed and I'm pressing it to go off to the long arm. His Nana is his long armor. I'm sure she'll, he'll go right to the top of the queue, right to the front. She says, um, he chose everything <clears throat> from fabrics to sizing. All I did was sew. Happy to be along this afternoon. Oh, that's pretty. So here's... Here's the quilt, and uh, she's got beautiful colors there. He designed it. He decided borders. All she did was press and sew, and what a wonderful hobby to have together. That is absolutely beautiful, so I'm glad you could share that. I love the batiks, and I think that the guys love the batiks, too. You know, nothing with flowers. Don't give me flowers. Rebecca says, bodacious. Working on my bodacious quilt. Thank you, Bonnie, for this fun pattern from Adventures with Leaders and Enders. And let's see if I can. It's an embedded photo, so I'm just going to embiggy it as, as much as I can. Quilts that are rainbow are just, just a favorite. I love all the multitude of colors that can go in something like this. So this is Rebecca's bodacious. If you have a plethora, which means a huge whole lot, of inch and a half strips, maybe left over from our leader and ender challenge a couple years ago. Those inch and a half strips would be perfect in this. It's stitch and flip corners and four patches. Super simple. And if you use it as your leader ender project, it can be right here by the machine and you'll be building those, those um, bow ties. Just lickety split. That is just beautiful. Jan Briggs says, quilt cam today. You're coming through great. Love you and all you do. Here's what I'm working on, and I spy a black 
singer short bit. Is it a short bit? Come on, baby. Doesn't show. It's cut off. <laughs> the bed is cut off. Whether it's short bed or long bed, I don't know, but it's sure beautiful. So I've sat, this little table right here is the table that my 301 short bed sits in, but I brought it in here because it's a folding table. I grabbed it from the the um, closet at the retreat house and just brought it over to put on the side because these blocks are too big. So love those machines and their tables. Beautiful. Okay, so here's another one that says playing with colors from Johnny or Joni. Got an idea for front door curtains. Almost done. So glad I caught you today. So it is Joni, Joan Elkins. And she's got purples and teals and burgundies and greens. I love this color palette. And it does look like stained glass. So she's made curtains for her thing there. Wonderful. Okay, and I wanted to show you guys too. Um, if I look like a drowned rat, it's because we had quite the downpour. And the UPS truck pulled right up next door in front of the retreat house. I saw brown. I mean, the driveway's right out here. So I saw a brown truck come in. And stupid me, I didn't let him just drop it at the front door. I had to run out there and go retrieve it myself. But this is something that I saw at, at my aunt's house. And I post a picture of it. And I did find them on Amazon. It's a three-prong adapter. So it's for power. So it's got the three prongs. But the cool thing about it, use this for your iron. It's got an on-off switch on the side. When it's on, it glows red. If the light is on, your iron is on. And how easy is that to flip the switch to turn it off? It's less cumbersome than a big, um, you know, six outlet power strip. This just goes right to the wall. So I'm thinking for the retreat house that we'll just put these where irons go. And then people will be easily be able to turn on, turn off, turn on, turn off. Wipe on, wipe off, wax on, wax off. So that's my thingy. I bought six. I'm going to put one for the iron here um, at the post office as well because off is good. On, not so good. Okay, so I'm going to add another one. And so I'm. these are just all stacked up. I start at the top of the row. I put them all right sides together first. Column two over column one. Go back to row one and pick them up on order. So the, the first set's on the top all the way down. So here's another one. It's a sashing with a cornerstone underneath. Yep, looking for the foot pedal again. How long will it take to break that habit? So there's one. And then the next block is right sides together with the sashing that it goes with. I love this quilt. It's got big blocks. The baskets were smaller, but when you put four baskets together with sashing, it's kind of a happy big block. Alrighty, and then that's going to go there. And then this one's going to go there. She sews so well. I just love this little machine. Okay, and then we're going to reverse press that one to fit that basket seam. And then that one. Where's Sadie? Oh, Sadie's back over on her bed. So once we get mom sewing, she knows she's going to be here for a while. So. I'd like to get down to the end of the stack just so that I can show you what happens with column three. We've done this before. It's my most requested demo. How do you web a quilt? So this is what we are going to show you. Okay. And I could stop and pin every seam, but most of these seams don't nest with anything else. And I'm pretty good at pinch pinning. Okay. And that one goes there. So I was talking to the husband of a friend who says, so you're doing what this afternoon? Quilt cam. Well, what is quilt cam? Well, I just set up stuff and I just sew and we do it on camera and people ask questions and they watch and they send in their pictures and 
people watch you so <laughs> why would anybody watch you so I don't know so why are you watching this <sighs> which makes me wonder are they watching it just so they can see how many people watch me so but I'm loving it you know I can't believe how fast June is going already we're just a couple days from the summer solstice which means those of you down under your days will start to get longer soon hours will get shorter and it seems like we just got here and I'm not ready for them to go shorter yet but um, one of these days this is going to be my nearly every day event where I get to come play with the quilters and fill my mail order and teach maybe once a month somewhere and do more quilt cam, more online projects. I'd love to have some sew alongs. Um, we've got still got our mystery coming up. We've got leader ender challenge happening here in a little over a week. It's going to be exciting. Let me first press that. It is okay. This one goes here. We're almost to the end of this column, and then I can show you what's going on here. But it feels really good to sew here, and the, the light is, is wonderful in this room. I love it. Okay, and the last piece. So this is where I would have a leader ender, and I don't. I suppose I could grab something. We'll just remove it from the machine. Okay. Okay, so this is the first two columns, right sides together, and it feels a little bit unwieldy and twisty at this point, right? It's twisty. So I want to take it from the bottom up. So I grabbed the bottom that I just finished and I've turned it over. So now column number one is to my right. And I am going to just do a line of stay stitching all the way from this cornerstone all the way to the other end to the other cornerstone. And that's going to keep column one from twisting. The, the chaining threads are going to stop twisting between these two. Okay. This was a hint that was given to me uh, this past fall when I was teaching in Indiana. And it's like, well, why didn't I think of that? And I've done it a couple of times since. And it makes a lot of sense. So basically, it's just stay stitching and joining things here. It's going to keep all of the seams for, on this side of column number one from popping open because they've been strip pieced, right? And they've been subcut. So all of those seams love to pop open by the time you get the quilt assembled. So stay stitch really helps. And I'm going to give myself even a little bit longer stitch. And this big twisty mess is going to be in my lap. If you've got a good tension, your work should lay flat. If it's ruffling up, you may need to adjust your tension when sewing through one layer. So I'm going to connect that row to this one and just go all the way. See, because I won't have this twisted mess anymore if I can do that. It'll kind of anchor that side. And I'm doing this just less than a quarter inch. On this vintage machine, I'm using the edge of the presser foot, which is a little over an eighth. So this is just makes it so nice. So now you can see, if I hold this edge up, that now there's no twisting. There's no twisting at all because I have stay stitched on the edge of column number one. And it's going to make everything easier from this point on. So give it a try. Use a larger stitch. You may need to adjust your tension a bit. This tension seems to be okay. I think I'm going to loosen it up just a little bit. Sometimes when going through just one layer. Okay, 
yeah, this is going to help a lot, a lot, a lot. Then, of course, once you've finished adding all the other columns onto your quilt center, you'll want to do the same, excuse me, same thing with your last column as well. And then those two sides are stay stitched, right? Once you've got the center together, give it a quarter turn and do the top and bottom as well. And the whole thing will be stay stitched all the way around. That's going to help with any seams popping open, um, any stretching of the top before you put borders on. Yeah, there's, we're down, just about down to the bottom. All the twist is under control. Except for when you break a thread. I think breaking a thread is a good time. <laughs> Rats. Good time to take some more emails. Let's see what's going on. You can email me at quiltcamtime at gmail.com. Let's see what we've got here. Sarah says, my latest project, I'm watching it work. This is for my three-year-old granddaughter, Tilly. It now has sashing and the first border, but I don't have that picture here. And this is, um, she doesn't say, oh, she's in Connecticut. Oh, how cute. So she's, Tilly evidently loves unicorns. She's got this, the sashing on now. But look at those manes. How fun is that? You can string piece that. That's absolutely wonderful. Beautiful job. Okay. And Karen says machine. That machine is like the one I learned to sew on. I love the knee pedal. I long to have another machine like that. I don't know what my parents did with it. My sewing teacher told my parents I should have a newer machine if I was going to be serious about sewing. I tell you what, you can't get much seriouser than this. Much more seriouser. <laughs> much more serious. Um, that is when I got my Kenmore in 1974. My, my dad would always hate it when I would say things like seriouser or more better or things like that. So we do it on purpose. Love you, dad. Karen, you'll find another one. They're out there. Um, this table is extra sweet because the whole machine, oh, can I lift it from here? <coughs> The machine is still in its base. Just gonna make sure I don't burn myself on the hot. Oh, I've got a little, let's see. Got a little thingy to turn here, I think. Wiggle out, can you wiggle out? Can you wiggle out? Maybe not. What am I stuck on? I'm stuck on, oh, I'm stuck on the, I'm stuck on the foot pedal lift, so I, I can't lift it out. But the machine is in a domed case, you know, the old fashioned dome case, and the base, you can see the base right around here, just fits in the hole. It's sitting on a shelf underneath, and when the machine is out, the shelf is flush with the tabletop. So you can just use it as a little desk. So um, I, lo I love this table. My friend Allison showed me hers, and I had to have one. So we know how that goes. But you'll find one, Karen. I know that they're out there. They are out there. All right. So we go to Joan Parker says, Majesty Mountain and the Moth in the Window. Here are two of your quilts that I finished up recently. The Majesty Mountains is for my son-in-law. The Moth in the Window is one that I actually set aside time to work on every day and power through. I didn't work on any other projects while I was making that one. I made my moth quilt a little lar larger than mine. <laughs> larger? That's a big quilt. She says both are all made from upcycled shirts. Thanks for two great patterns. So this is the one that she made with the Scrappy Mountain Majesties pattern. That's um, one of my best, best free patterns. That's under the free patterns tab at the top of my blog. But I love the plaids. Aren't they gorgeous? And how she's used the random widths and lengths of plaids to make a border with all of the scraps left over. So that's so great. And then the other one, let's see, if I turn sideways, will this come up better? Yeah, it does. So here's her moth in the window, even bigger than the one that's in the Addicted to Scraps book. Beautiful, a great use of plaids. You know, there's so many um, quilts out there that, that spark my interest, and I'm always asking myself, wow, wouldn't that look great in shirt fabric? So those are beautiful. Thank you for sharing those. And then we have Mary Lou Finch says, what I'm doing. I'm a substitute teacher, only have... 
three kids this period. Last period, I taught a girl how to make a French knot. So that still happens. She's doing many French knots. This is a little uh, pretty embroidery piece. Come on, picture. Oh, pretty. So she's embellishing that fabric with French knots and other little stitches. It's so nice to see that embroidery is still alive and well. Um, if those of you remember me talking about a giraffe picture I was doing for the Kenya trip, the giraffe is done. Now the experiment of soaking it so that the um, stick and stitch dissolves away will happen is, is next up sometime this week. Wonderful. Okay. And Barbara Mix, Mixbadden says, first timer. Hi, Bonnie. Met you about two years ago. <clears throat> when we relocated to the Minneapolis area. This is my first live quilt cam and I'm tickled. You introduced me to vintage sewing machines and now have a herd of, of eight. Two treadles, two hand cranks, a 404 and a 185, a 101. I don't have a 101 and a featherweight. Current projects include a California king size Bargello and Christmas fabrics for my son and daughter-in-law. Daughter in law. So that's Barb from Minnesota. Wonderful. And Beth says, watching with Marlo. I'm from Arizona, but I'm in Virginia watching my nine month old granddaughter Marlo while her parents are attending a conference. Mimi and Marlo, boy, <laughs> Mimi and Marlo sounds like a great comedy team on, on Netflix, doesn't it? I think I think that sounds like a crime prayer. Um, Mimi and Marlo are watching Bonnie sew. Thanks for the distraction. Beth, AKA Soccer TXI from Arizona, who's enjoying Virginia. I know our temperatures are cooler than they are in Arizona. I'm not sure where you are in, in Virginia, but we have had rain after rain after rain. And guess what it's doing outside the window right now? More rain. Oh, here's her picture. Oh, Marlo, you are a peach. Oh my goodness. Look at these, look at these cheeks. That is the best, best Mimi gift of all. So I love her name. It's just so, so pretty. So we are here. It's been not quite an hour, but if I'm going to thread this machine up, and it's likely because I, oh, I'm out of bobbin. That's what the problem is. So I don't have time to wind a bobbin and whatever, but I will probably spend some more time here working on this. But my hint for you is those of you Webers out there, Webers, which means quilters, not grills. Webers, okay, try this. When you have assembled column two over column one, go back and stay stitch along the outside edge of column one. Look at this. This is wonderful. No twisting, no bunching, no lumping, no knotting, no tangling, no pulled threads, except for where the bobbin ran out. So do I get to say my regular thing? If it's still early where you are and you are deep in a project and you have time before you have to decide what's for dinner tonight, go ahead and see if you can get some more stitches in. I am pleased as punch that um, we've been able to stream as well as we have here today. Um, I was I was hopeful, pinky swear, hopeful, please, please, please let it work. Um, of course, the internet still works at home in Wahlberg, and I'll be there from time to time because that place isn't isn't gone. Um, half of my stash is still there or more. Um, but most of the time, I'm going to be here, and the Wahlberg house is for interim when I have to, uh, the day before I have to fly out somewhere, the day after flying back in from somewhere, and in between when I need to restock um, with cases of books and things like that, and occasionally visit my son if he's not up here uh mowing the lawn so life is in flux and it's all good and i'm th thrilled to be here with you today um things to watch out for in today's blog post i mentioned a couple of venues that still have openings so the registration for next year's um, empty spool seminars at asilomar have opened up i'm teaching uh five days of um emerald city for the first session the second session is the Straits of Mackinac quilt, both from String Frenzy. If you've never attended the conference at Asilomar, it's five days of working on one project. You get really close with the other folks that are in class. 
Um, we just take an easy time. We take walks on the beach. We um, have really great food. It's a wonderful place to be in March if you live somewhere where the climate is less friendly in March. So we'll be there. Um, the dates are up on today's blog post. Also, um, the Old Man River Quilt Fest is not a show this year. It's just a summer workshop series. And I'm teaching four workshops in um, Vicksburg, Mississippi. And that happens in August. So that information is on my online calendar and also today on, on today's blog post. Things that are new in Quiltville land that I'm not carrying in the Quiltville store are out and about um, via Amazon, your local quilt shop, and any other online retailers that ships things bigger than a priority mail envelope. Um, my thousand piece puzzle called Festival of Quilts is out and shipping. And so is my um, Smith Mountain Morning. Oh, gosh, why are you? I you know, you name, you name hundreds of quilts and trying to pull the right one off your tongue is not always easy. Smith Mountain Morning from Scraps and Shirt Tales 2 is a large tote, perfect for hauling um, quilts to class, supplies, even wonderful for your groceries, and we can save those bags instead of getting all the plastic bags that are clogging our planet. We can use bags that we can reuse and reuse again and again and share your love of quilting with those around you. Um, when can we do this again? I will be in California next week. When we come back, it's it's um, 4th of July week, and I'm spending that with family, and I have my friend Lisa that may be coming up to visit me, so probably not then. And then I've got um, a, a teaching trip to Kentucky, and then a two days home, and then like two weeks in Pennsylvania for my summer series at Mary Coble's quilt shop and then on to Hershey. So we'll try to squeeze it in there knowing that it works here and that I can do it from Virginia. This is, this is just the best because I was really, really worried there. And now that we know how to get into live video, we can do it. Facebook, would you please just stop changing things? It worked just fine the other way. Um, until we see each other again, keep up with the blog, keep up with Facebook and other social media. You'll know where I am and what I'm doing and, and things that are going on in here in, in my wonderful quilty crazy world. And uh, I'm going to go wind a bobbin and finish putting this top together. So wherever you are, have a great afternoon, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time from the Quiltville Post Office. This is Bonnie Hunter signing off. Bye.